Hey everybody, it's Casey, and uh, back for another 10 minute recap uh, from our series called What About, where this week we're looking about what about God and science. So thanks for joining us. Hopefully this is the beginning of some dialogue and some, uh, some cool talking points. So let's just hop right in. Um, hey, uh, we're taking a look at how there's different approaches to God and science. And so some people come from an approach of a God versus science, where it's confrontational and science and God, man, they're just always angry at each other. They usually fight. Some people come from a God behind science approach where um, they're cool with God, but it's like science usually wins out because science is where the intelligent community hangs out. And so God is usually lagging behind science and kind of dependent on science to figure things out. Uh, some people have a God and science where uh, they're into God and they're into science, but the two never mix. It's like two different worlds. And some people have a God in science approach. That's, uh, that's what we see in the scriptures. It's like, hey man, let's look for God in science, believing that the more science we have, the more God will have. And so let's hop in and see if that's uh, actually accurate. According to the scriptures, Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. You can see here that basically what we have here in, in Psalm 19 is like, creation, um, man, it, uh, the heavens, it says something about God. And so the, the theology of science is that creation is saying something and science, man, it helps us to, helps us to listen. Simply put, creation is saying something Science helps us to listen. I love that approach, man. It's like, give me more science because I want to know more about how this place works so that I can know more about who's behind it. And um, so where do, we, where do we kind of find God in science? Well, we find him in a lot of different areas. One area that we're going to look at uh, simply is intelligent design. Um, can we see God uh, becoming more and more evident uh, in our, our scientific understanding of, of him as designer uh, of all of this stuff? And so uh, basically, man, a couple, a couple of thoughts here under intelligent design. Um, sort of older science would have said we exist in a steady state, which means we don't really need outside help to exist. And, um, you know, uh, we, we didn't, uh, didn't depend on any anything outside of ourselves really uh, newer science even in the 1930s has said that no it looks like there was a beginning and it looks like there's now a, a sustainer um, that supports all of this stuff and um, obviously that would point to uh, there being a, a designer behind uh, what we have around us in, in our universe and uh, the the foundation the foundational theme that drives this is this idea of um, uh, complexity that has um, like a strategy for use so uh, what we see here uh, as we get more data, as we do more research, as we dig deeper, as we see um, we're having findings of a, a, a diversity of different things that actually come together and, and as they come together, they sustain, they, they create, um, there's life there. But um, if they're not working together, uh, then, then it's not, it's not going to work out. Um, and uh, or if there's not the diversity of uh, matter or material, it's not going to work out. Uh, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to have uh, the things that we have. And so, uh, a couple of places where where we see this happening, we look at uh, the human body and DNA and the complexity there. Uh, and what's cool about the human body is uh, it, it uh, reminds us of Francis Collins who was in charge of the uh, Human Genome Project and uh, leading scientist of our day, um, comfortable in his atheism and agnosticism where he's just like, man, that's, uh, you know, that's not really for me. And what was, what was awesome is getting to hear an interview with him where he's just like, man, I just didn't consider the facts and it's my job to consider the evidence. Uh, and so as he did that, uh, you see that uh, he became a person who put his faith in Jesus Christ as, uh, as Lord and Savior, which is really cool uh, to see. And um, anyway, so uh, as, as we look at the, the body and DNA, we see this um, complexity coming together uh, to bring about something 
Beautiful. As we look at our universe and how it's uh, continuing to expand, we see this, um, you know, the rate at which it expands and all these sort of things point to like, man, this has got to really be sustained carefully. And in and, um, and our planet Earth, um, we see here that if it was moved a little bit this way, a little bit that way, if it spinned and it didn't spin correctly, that was a really good spin, by the way. But if like it got off balance or whatever, man, like it's over. It, it's, it's not good. Um, and, and destruction ensues and, and, and we can't keep going. Um, and so it's really interesting when you start to think about things like uh, the universe or, or especially even this planet that we inhabit, man, like there's, there's such delicacy in how these things are working together and yet such complexity. It's like our iPhones, man. There's got to be somebody behind that. Um, at least that's, that's uh, the conclusion that uh, we see uh, and, and that matches biblically. Uh, that may not be your conclusion. That might not be where you are. We love you and that's cool. We just uh, love to dialogue with you in that. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, th those were some of the things that, uh, that we were looking at today. Uh, we, we, we saw in scripture that it's, it's uh, fair for us according to a biblical perspective to be looking for these things in science and logical evidence. Uh, Romans 1 says that uh, creation is going to tell you something about God. And then when we see intelligent and we look about creation, we do believe that it tells us there's a designer behind it who's intelligent and, and probably loving and, and, and probably good and probably for that creation. Um, practical encouragement, we see the uh, Isaiah say that there's a creator who never tires or wearies and that those who wait upon him can, can also experience that uh, in, in, their, in their degree, to a degree. Um, and so it's kind of cool how it's like the more you understand the creator and his creation, it's almost like the more you can rest in his sustaining ability. The last one is unique insight. Um, Colossians 1 talks about how all of creation was made by Jesus and then for Jesus. And so just like at Christmas when you see the gifts that someone gets, you can learn something about that person. Um, there's unique insight the more we learn about creation that points to Jesus and namely not not just that he loves different patterns and the way things work together and diversity and color but uh, he he loves life he loves bringing um, new things to life and so uh, these were some of the things that that uh, hopefully were uh, encouraging to us today Steve Cable writes by combining the general revelation of science with the special revelation of the Bible, we should be re rewarded with a greater understanding of the nature of our Creator and His intentions for mankind. And uh, yeah, it's a re it's a reward for us to pursue the things of science. Um, we do believe Jesus changes everything, and um, not only our approach to the scientific community, where it's like, man, we can we can disagree and, and still love one another, value uh, other perspectives. Um, we, we can enter into like uh, uplifting dialogue and, and be good listeners. Um, we, we also have uh, some, some pretty solid foundational evidence that supports uh, a case um, uh, for these things, biblically speaking, of an of intelligent designer, an intelligent designer that uh, loves us and is for us. And, um, and, and especially this, this last thought is like, all of science seems to be about beauty. It's like the more you know about how something works, you're like, Oh my goodness, it's like beautiful. And what's cool is things that are beautiful here in this earth, they, they have a way of pointing to something that has ultimate beauty, even if we don't know how to name it. Um, and we just want to name that person as Jesus. And that's what we believe and that's what we'd uh, love to continue to share with you guys. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful. I said that I would share some resources. These are some of the resources that were helpful uh, in this process. Bruce Maline, Know the Truth, The Handbook of Christian Belief. John Bloom, What Science is Really Teaching Us. The Pleasure of God and His Creation, Desiring God. Finding God in Science, Christianity Today. How to Talk to Your Kids About Evolution, Evolution Probe for Answers in Alpha.org. You might want to take a picture of that. Love you guys. See you next time.